I've just come from another rally, so I suppose about, I suppose about 400 young people who couldn't get a hall, so they've done it in the street, just to uh, an act of solidarity with Germany. Let me just tell you, let me just tell you where we're at at the moment, because it's important that you know. I just want to go back a short while, I won't keep it long. When Jeremy got elected last year, he got elected on, what, 59.5% of the vote. The highest, the highest vote, the highest, biggest mandate any political leader in this country has ever received for their own membership. It was overwhelming. It was in individual members, the affiliated group, and also the new supporters, the three-pound supporters. In every category, he won. When we got back into Parliament, he constructed Jeremy, well, I've known Jeremy for 35, 40 years. He's one of the most caring, compassionate people I've met in politics. And what he tried to do in his own quiet, considerate way is work with people, put them together, he created a shadow tablet on the left, right, and centre, tried to hold it together. And he did that, he tried to work with the Parliamentary Labour Party all the way through. But there's been a group under the DLP who consistently refuse to accept his democratic mandate and who have consistently undermined him in every way they possibly can. And to be frank, I don't know how he's born it. I just don't know how he's born it. I'm just so proud of him to be honest with what he's done. We knew we knew at that stage, at some time, we knew they were plotting to see if they could have a coup at some stage. We knew that. We knew all the way along. The thing about it is they're not particularly good at it. <laughs> <laughs> and we had people in meetings where they were discussing who would be the candidate they would run, etc. And so we got intelligence on a regular basis. And the first attempt was the open by-election, because what they've tried to say is that it's not political this, it's not his policies we can see, it's the fact that he can't win elections. So the open by-election was the first test. If he loses the open by-election, that might be the opportunity to make some form of coup or spot to start the first stage. We went to Oldham, Hugh McNall was a fantastic candidate, but what we got was the best of both worlds, a good local candidate and the Corbett supporters' enthusiasm. And we, we had a massive victory in Oldham, so they backed off there. So the next one, the next one was going to be any the local government elections. That was the excuse for the next plot to go back. And we got to the local government elections, they said again, you can't win an election with Corbyn, etc. We won every mayoral election we contested. Every one. We won, we won the seats in terms of local government, the councils we were expected to lose, we won every one. We reached, we reached in our first six months the highest level of good support that Mirabank got all through his term of office. Now that wasn't something that we thought was wonderful, but it was better than anyone thought possible. And in every parliamentary by-election that's taken place, we've increased our majorities on every occasion. When Jeremy took over as leader in September, we were 14 points behind in the opinion polls in September. We're now ahead of the Tories in the opinion polls this week, even post Brexit. And here's the irony, here's the irony, it's just extraordinary. On Monday, the Parliamentary Labour Party meeting was one of the most disgraceful meetings I've ever attended. It was like a lynching without the rope. It was appalling. And the idea of MP after MP got up, again, to call upon Jeremy to resign, you can't win elections, we can't win elections under you. Here's the irony. The first item on the agenda on Monday night was to welcome the new Labour MP for Tooting who would double their majority. <laughs> I don't accept. 
that this is about Jeremy not being able to win elections. I know how tough it's going to be to defeat the Tories, but also we know that we've been building a solid base of support. Why? Because we've changed the political direction of this party within nine months. When we went into the last election, we were for austerity life. We'd gone ahead, we'd voted for tuition fees, we'd voted for wars in Iraq, and all the rest of it. We've transformed us as we now an anti-austerity party. We're now in favour of scrapping tuition fees. We're in favour of building council houses again. We're in favour of trade union rights. <laughs> And also, in the week before Chilcot is published, <laughs> in the week before Chilcot is published under Jeremy Corbyn, we're now a party that will never again go on a military adventure that costs 500,000 lives as it has happened under Iraq under Blair. Never again. That's why they're coming for Jeremy. This isn't yeah. this isn't about electability. This is about this is about policy and politics. They told us that it was about the European Union referendum because he hadn't done enough. Well, let me just explain what happened on that because I'm I'm bloody bitter that we lost it. I'm sad we lost it. But well, what happened way back in September, Jeremy and I met with Angela Reid and Hillary Benn and they wanted to run the European referendum campaign and said fine. But at that point in time we said we need to agree the politics of this. We can't just go out there as simple Euro files. Because to be frank, there was a need for reform in Europe. At that point in time they were trying to argue that we had to unanimously support Cameron's deal in Europe, yeah, which yeah. we refused. <laughs> So we said, get on with the campaign and call us in when you need us. We'll do all we can to support. Jeremy toured around this country in a way that the stamina of the man is unbelievable. Yes. Thousands of miles, meeting after meeting. We spoke, both of us have spoken in virtually every major city in this country for the European referendum campaign. But we campaigned on the basis of remain but reform because that's where most of the British population are unfortunately. Yeah. They realise there needs to be reform. There is no use going out there and just arguing the European Union was perfect. It was remain reform. We also said to be frank, as soon as you start appearing on platforms with Tories, Farage and Boris Johnson ironically will call you the establishment. And that's exactly what happened in Scotland, and that's exactly what happened in northern cities in particular across this country. So we believe the tactics of the campaign were wrong, but nevertheless we worked really hard. <clears throat> but when it came out, the result came out, they wanted a scapegoat, and they wanted to blame Jeremy, but then they wanted to use this as the excuse for the coup. And what happened, I'll briefly tell you. <coughs> on Saturday night last, we got contacted by Daniel Boffey, the observer, who's actually a sympathetic journalist. What's been happening is been briefed that Hillary Bear is phoning around the shadow cabinet, urging people to uh, urge Jeremy to stand down or threaten resignation. When Jeremy contacted him and said, is this true? He was happy if, if there was a statement put out saying it was an error or that Hillary would withdraw from it, he refused. So what else could he do but ask him to stand down? There was no other option. Leap like now. What we then discovered is that there was a basic plan that what would happen is group after group of individual front benchers would resign in batches because that's to destabilize us on the basis that one group resigned and thought, fine, we can accommodate that, settle down for a few hours, and then another group would resign. It went on like that. So, what Jeremy had to do was simply put together another shadow camp, and that's what we've done. And we've brought in, yes, lots of the new young people into the new Shadow Cabinet. I tell you, listening to some of their speeches this week, it's been thrilling, and they are the heroes and heroines of this movement.
where we're at now, because um, you get to the point where it becomes farcical. What they did to try and divide me and Jeremy, what they did, they briefed the media yeah. that I was trying to challenge it. <laughs> <laughs> and today, today, Tom Watson's gone and done an interview saying it's John MacDonald who's forcing him to stay. You can't have it both <laughs> What I've said very straightforwardly, if Jeremy wants to remain the leader of this Labour Party, I support him wholeheartedly, I will chair his campaign committee again, <coughs> but it is his decision, and he's made that decision. He's staying. Yeah. tragedy that's going on now at the time when, to be frank, our country is facing some of the severest economic problems we've had in a generation as a result of the referendum debate. When the Tories are in disarray and there's virtually no government there whatsoever, this is the time the Labour Party should have held together and stayed up. It isn't. It isn't just for the sake of the party. It's for the sake of our country and the people we represent. We because they're the ones, the people we represent are the ones that will be hit the hardest as a result of this result from the European referendum and the economic instability. So what we've said is Jeremy's saying, if someone wants to challenge him, fine. And I spoke to Tom Watts, I said, if a candidate comes forward, Let's have the democratic election of the, le the leadership election, but let's do it as comrades, as friends. It doesn't have to be like this. We should be able to act amicably in this party, not in the way that people have treated Jeremy in the parliamentary yeah, yeah. 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 themselves about who should be the candidate. So it looks as though Angela Regal, we're told by the BBC, will announce that she'll become a candidate tomorrow. Fine. Fine. I've said we should convene an urgent NEC, have a short leadership campaign timetable, so matching the Tories so we can get our leader in place, so that we can then, if necessary, challenge the Tories and if there is a general election, then we're ready to go with the leader. But, above all else now at the moment, what we need people to do, whichever position they come from, is just to hold together in the party, just to basically treat each other with some common decency. Yeah. Yeah. NEC will set up the timetable for the leadership election. <coughs> and we'll have what we've always wanted, really, is just a democratic debate. Jeremy will stand again, tour around the country, setting out his policies, and we'll hope that he gets re-elected. We welcome, if you're not a member of the Labour Party at the moment, we need you to join. Yes. If you are a member of the Labour Party, let me just say this. What we're witnessing at the moment is a very British coup. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't face this down, what will be the point of being a Labour Party member? Yeah. Yeah. Voting for a leader that you want and then having the parliamentary Labour Party MPs exercise a veto. That is unacceptable. There's a, been a recent modern invention by the Greeks. It's called democracy. <laughs> what we're standing for now in this, 
period now is democracy in the party. The ability of rank and file members of the Labour Party to choose the leader they want, the policies that we want. And if we lose that, if we allow this coup to destroy Jeremy Corbyn, they destroy our party. Yeah. 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 I'm not going to allow that to happen. I hope you don't. So I'm urging you now, I'm urging you, pleading with you now, as we go into this period, let's be comraded to whoever comes forward in the other campaigns, but let's stand firm in the interest of democracy. And I appeal to you to support the person who actually did get democratically elected only nine months ago, transformed our policies into becoming a socialist party once again, and right way around the country, gave people hope of a new form of politics, caring, compassionate, but socialist above all else. So I say to you, if this election comes, stand with me and support Jeremy Corbyn. Solidarity. Yeah.